Shalom Mishkan David partners with Israel and welcome, welcome to our weekly updates. You're about to watch this week's update, what's happening in Israel, what's happening in the spirit. So you'll be educated and you'll know how to wage war against the enemies and how to pray and what to pray about. So if you're not yet a partner with Israel, please go into our mishkandavid.org website. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see Gift to Israel. Just click on that link over there and become a sustainable partner of Israel. With $18 a month or increments of $18, you can make a huge impact in Israel, help people, support lives, and really, really make a difference. So please go to mishkandavid.org, click on the Israel link, and become a sustainable partner. Now, go to the video. Shabbat Shalom Israel partners and welcome. Welcome to our weekly report, our weekly update about what's happening in Israel, what's going on in the world, what's happening in the spirit. And I would like to start real quick with a short update about the Torah portion of this week. This week we're starting to read the book of Deuteronomy. So this is the last book of the five books of Moses. And we're starting with the uh, chapters uh, one three, uh, through three. So this is like the first three chapters of the book of Devarim. That's the name of the Torah portion. In Hebrew, Devarim means Moses is speaking to the people of Israel. This is about, I would say, five weeks, a month to five weeks uh, before he's dying, his death. And he's on the other side of the Jordan River, of course. He's not entering into the Promised Land. And he is starting to remind the people of Israel about what was happening throughout the 40 years in the desert, mainly emphasizing many of the disaccords and the situations that the people of Israel went through when they disobeyed the Word of God. He speaks about their rebellious nature, about how he couldn't handle the things on his own and he needed help and he set up uh, the uh, political system with ministers and with uh, judges and police officers that would help him control the different types of tribes of Israel. Of course, he speaks about all the situations when they, they went into wars. Uh, but everything that he talks about and the punishments that God gave and the fact that they were through the desert instead of going straight from uh, receiving the Torah in Mount Sinai and within a few days making it into the promised land, they need to struggle through 40 more years in the desert. And, and, but after he tells the people all these things, he also releasing a very comforting message uh, to Joshua. He speaks to Joshua who is going to be his successor and he tells him, fear not, when you're going to enter the land of Israel, you should not be afraid because the Lord God of Israel, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies of Israel, he is the one to fight all the wars against those giants and everything that comes against you in that promised land. So that's the emphasis that he gives Joshua. Fear not because the Lord is the one to wage war against your enemies. And that's what I want to relate to right now. Israel, you're standing in a junction right now where many nations are coming against us and we have to fear not. We have to remember that the Lord God of Israel fights all our wars. Just we need to create more unity. That's the main message. Much more unity, less disaccord. We've seen what's happening in the political arena in Israel. There's a lot of stories, allegations, fears. Uh, what was happening with the government now? Uh, will, be, will there be unity? Will there not be unity? I need to tell you that it doesn't matter even though we disagree with the political situation in Israel. We need to pray for the Prime Minister, we need to pray for the Minister, we need to pray for the Government of Israel, and we need to pray for the will of God to be done. We are in a dire situation right now with Iran. A lot of the enemies of Israel are getting stronger right now. They're coming closer and closer to our borders. There's a very tough situation in Lebanon right now. They are on the verge of probably the one of the biggest humanitarian crises that any nation could go through. Uh, literally today, the uh, president of Lebanon, Aoun, who's a Christian, uh, couldn't accept the government that was offered to him, and he resigned himself, 
And when he resigned, he gave his resignation. His last words were, Lebanon, may the Lord help you. May the Lord save you. We're seeing that our neighbor from the north, which we're not in very friendly relations with, and it's possessed by Hezbollah, literally the people of Lebanon, they are held hostages just like the people of Gaza by the Hamas. The people of Lebanon, they're held hostages by the Hezbollah. This is actually the week when we are remembering 15 years to the second Lebanon war. So we are literally on the verge of a humanitarian crisis. The Israeli army is actually... Uh, uh, repositioning more and more troops up in the north because they're afraid of, of immigrants and people that are going to try and break the borders and come here to find some stability even though Israel offered help to the Lebanese government and to the through the international community and the UN we're willing to send humanitarian aid but because it's coming from us from the Jews they refuse I mean this is the terrible thing about Islam is that in 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 the scales of hatred on their eyes, they won't see who wants to really help or not. Uh, I want to pray for Lebanon. I want to pray for the people of Lebanon that are held hostage by Hezbollah and bad governments for so many years that these people deserve peace. They deserve good life. Look, we are about to enter tomorrow, Shabbat. This is Shabbat evening when we are entering into at the 25 hours of fasting for Tisha B'Av. You can go back to some of our old updates to learn about Tisha B'Av. I did a lot of teachings in the past, so you can look it up and, and, and read about it and, and, listen, and listen to it. But anyways, we are about to enter Tisha B'Av. This is a time of grieving and mourning. That's the time when we, the people of Israel, fast for 25 years in remembrance to what happened to us, the Jewish people, when there is lack of unity and disaccords. The first and the second temples of Israel were destroyed both on the same date, Tisha B'Av. And I pray for all of us to remember that and to build up our unity, our togetherness. And this would be the only way as we build unity that we will we'll be there to experience and to enjoy the coming of the Mashiach, the Messiah, and the building of the third temple. Only with unity and accord and with agreement, we will be able to inherit God's will in our lives and reestablish His kingdom in the land of Israel. So please remember, as we remember 15 years to the Second Lebanon War, please remember, as we remember from the year 70 AD, and from the year 486 BC, when the temples were destroyed because of hatred amongst the Jews, lack of unity and disaccord, please remember that we all need to pray together, Jews and Gentiles alike, to have unity, one accord. So God is going to send us the Redeemer, the Mashiach, and He will bring us into the building of our eternal third temple and the kingdom of God. I love you a lot. Shabbat Shalom. Unity, unity, unity. Bye for now.